Today, we're going to talk about relaxed hair, virgin hair, thin hair, damaged hair, healthy hair, perms, and relaxers because they're very different. Now, right now, what you are watching is me removing the relaxer from one of my client's hair. Now, the hair shaft disorder that she has is one that affects the ends and not her entire hair shaft. So with the product that I used before I put her relaxer on, I was able to put a very, very strong protective coating over her hair for her relaxer process if you want to see that video make sure you check the link in the description box below but let's break relaxers down because it's not as simple as mixing some products together so your hair is constructed of three bonds the soft bond the hydrogen bond and the disulfide bond the disulfide bond is standing for sulfur to sulfur linkages and in curly hair the more sulfur to sulfur linkages you have the curlier the hair is and the less of these sulfur to sulfur linkages you have the straighter your hair is so when you are getting a relaxer you are taking away some of those disulfide bonds and neutralizing the hair and then when you have straight hair you're getting a perm and you want to have curly hair you're putting more of those sulfur to sulfur linkages in and then neutralizing the hair right so let's get into it because it's really not as scary as everybody makes it sound and we really need to take emotion out of hair and stop making it such a cultural thing because women get perms just as much as women get relaxers and when you think of something like a jerry curl or a gina curl that is a relaxer and a perm put together where you first relax the hair and then you perm it so it's double the chemical and double damaging right but this is how it goes right so if you don't like the way that your hair is formatted you can break those bonds apart move them around and then remake them and neutralize them but when you go to cosmetology school you are there to learn how to do this process properly without damaging the hair so if your hair is damaged after a perm or after a relaxer somewhere in this process the bonds were not put together properly there are men and women who have permed and relaxed hair who have really healthy hair now this is what a perm looks like they have naturally straight hair right and then they put the um waving lotion on and it gives them a new curl pattern right we put perm rods all over their hair perm rods all over their head depending on the size that they want their curl to come out looking like right depending on the size of the curl that they desire we add that and then after that we put the neutralizer solution on and that gives them a new curl pattern permanently it is a relaxer in reverse but for whatever reason we're so emotionally attached to our hair in my community so we make it a cultural thing but everybody does it the majority of people that you see not all some people with that are not um black do have naturally curly hair right but for the majority of the people that you see with really really curly hair they get perms when i was in cosmetology school wednesday was senior day right and on senior day baby it smelled like rotten eggs in the shop all day because that's what perms smell like and they would come in honey and they would get their perms and it would be different color rollers i had this one lady named julie i would never forget because she used to tip me like a hundred and fifty Every time she was coming, I was in school, baby. That was that was good money, okay? And what was funny was she would always want me to alternate the blue and the gray ones because it gave her like a big fro. And I would get done. She would have me pick it out and grow until her nothing. And that was her perm. It is a relaxer in reverse. And as long as they take care of their hair, they have healthy hair. The woman that I just told you about, she had been getting perms, right? Which is different 
different from a relaxer. She had been getting perms her entire life, like her entire adult life. And she had to be in her 70s when I was doing her hair. And she had a full head of hair. So it is only when you do the chemical process wrong and you break down the bonds too much and you don't neutralize them properly that your hair breaks off, right? So when we see all of the different um, cases with relaxers and all of that, you guys, all of that is based on women who were doing relaxers themselves. I really want you guys to go in, read the case files, and read who the lawsuit is against. The lawsuit for relaxer is against home relaxers. So you're just for me, your motions, your olive oil, all of the relaxers that you can get in Walmart. That is who they're suing. They're not suing professional relaxers or cosmetologist so this is how the relaxer looks the initial state of the disulfide bonds and then once you chemically treat the hair you maneuver these bonds around you just switch the bonds around and when i change the bonds around and neutralize them you now have a new curl pattern and this is why after you get a relaxer there are certain things that you just shouldn't do right like if you are going to get a relaxer and then as soon as you rinse the relaxer out, you go ahead, blow dry your hair and then get box braids, don't do that. Or just any type of braiding or protective style after you do a relaxer, that's never a good idea, right? Because you are reformatting the bonds within your hair and most of the time you need at least a couple of months like at least about 60 days for those bonds to be in that new form consistently before you do things that cut off the oxygen supply or i shouldn't say cut it off 100 percent, but that limit it a little bit because when we're talking about weaves right or protective styles anything that you braid braids and extensions are and weaves are things that i only do on healthy hair if you have damaged hair i'm not gonna braid your hair and then put crochet braids in i'm not gonna braid your hair and then put a weave in i'm not gonna do any of those things i'm not braiding damaged hair because all i'm doing is putting tension on a hair shaft that's already uh containing splits and holes and rips and tangles right so you never want to do that when you are relaxing your hair, it needs to be because you have a certain style in mind. And to do this style, a relaxer makes it easier for you, right? If you are getting a perm, it is the same thing. Most of the time when you get, when people get perms, most of the time they're getting perms so they can add volume to their hair. While I was in cosmetology school, yes, Wednesday was, you know, the perm day for seniors. But when and other people got perms i have a whole lot of asian clients that will come and get perms just for the volume right so some of them we would do spot perms right if you're a licensed cosmetologist and you know what i'm talking about leave it in the comments but we would do spot perms where it would be like just throughout the crown because they just wanted fullness in the crown of their head it would just be certain areas that they felt like they wanted more fullness or it would be all over right and they would do their version of what you guys call wash and go but not wash and go they would wash and set where they would put shampoo and conditioner rinse the conditioner out leave in conditioner then go ahead and use a diffuser to scrunch the curls until the curls dry and then boom that is how their curly that's how they would wear their curly hair and this is something that ended up transitioning over to the natural community whenever people were like, I don't want to do heat or anything to my hair. Then women were like, okay, mind you, I'm a cosmetologist, so this is how the game went people were like okay well we can't beat them let's join them let's go ahead and start remodeling our business to look more conclusive to women who are not wanting to use any heat and there comes the curly cuts and all of the different things so they didn't create a curly cut isn't anything new that or a new technique that was created for curly hair absolutely not 
it is the way that you learn how to cut straight hair because straight hair swells when it is dry, right? But it's stretched when it is wet. So you cut it when it's wet to get the shape. And then you use a diffuser and you scrunch, right? That's their favorite word, scrunch, right? A couple of my friends from high school, I used to help them scrunch their hair, right? And that is how they would form their curls. So these are things that I really want you guys to think about. <laughs> Chemicals of any way, shape, or form are damaging if you don't know what you're doing, right? The most important part of cosmetology school is the part that you learn about chemicals. If we're being real, if you can't do hair, when you go to cosmetology school, when you get out, you still not going to be able to do hair. It's like a talent. It's like singing. You can take as many singing lessons as you want to, but you're not going to sound like Jordan Sparks. You're not going to sound like, huh? It don't matter how many classes that you take, you either got it or you don't. It's the same thing with hair, but one thing you can master is the science. You can. And when it comes to chemicals like color, relaxers, or perms, any type of chemical service, it is imperative that you understand the chemical complex of hair. And the reason that there's so much confusion, the reason that there's so much arguing like, oh, relaxers are bad and black women don't love themselves, so all of this is because you guys don't really understand the world of hair and the chemical compounds of them both relaxers and perms are both equally damaging to the hair if done wrong the same thing for a keratin treatment a keratin treatment is very different than a relaxer a relaxer is going deep into the cuticle and reformatting those um those disulfide bonds into the cortex i'm sorry and reformatting the disulfide bonds i explained that to you whereas keratin is just putting a layer on top of the hair and this is going to prevent the hair from swelling and getting wet faster and it just it adds a, like a shinier look by the way instead of olaplex um i used in this video joyco De defy damage um again watch the video in the description box below where you see her full cut and stuff for you to know more about that product because i talk about it in there give you the links all of that in that video this is a alternative option to olaplex a really good one too by the way. So anywho, at this point now, I am putting the product all over her hair. But again, I want you guys to really, really be cautious and conscious of the fact that when it comes to chemicals and when it comes to hair color, it's going to be damaging if you don't know what you're doing. But a person who knows what they're doing doesn't have damaged hair. There are so many women with relaxed hair here on YouTube with hair to their butt beautiful healthy hair to their butts relaxed so if you know what you're doing and you follow the right patterns relaxers do not damage your hair right the same this is the thing as damaging as a relaxer can be right and as many scalp issues as it can cause as many long-term problems as it can cause my loves i think it's safe to say in 2024 that the amount of different forms of scalp and follicle disorders that can be caused with relaxers are literally the same if not more um than what i mean i'm sorry are literally the same and for sure way less than what comes in the natural community because yeah there are a couple of different things that happen if a person who is not a professional does a relaxer wrong and they don't follow certain precautions to keep the relaxer from penetrating the scalp absolutely but the majority of people who follow team natural practices are bald right now or going bald or they're noticing after all of these years of doing it their hair is thinner and on a daily basis i'm constantly getting women telling me like oh my god i fought you tooth and nail until i start going bald in the middle and then i joined the seven day challenge and oh my god or i did join the seven day challenge i just watched your video and oh my god so now this beauty this is her first time in my chair and this is her the way that her hair was she does not have a relaxer from me but she does have a damaged hair her patterns were 
her patterns okay i don't we're not going into that it's not about that today okay but you know a lot of times we think that just because your hair is styled in a good way and you're able to put all of these gels and putties and butters and all your cute ponytails and stuff after a certain period of time it really does damage to the hair now on her end her hair shaft was actually really really damaged so it was actually a blessing that her hair texture was a little different because i was able to give her this cut without giving her a relaxer or without giving her any chemical services but i do want to say this everybody is not a candidate for getting a short pixie cut without a relaxer let me say that and guess what i am one of those people i am not a candidate okay they don't have no room for me okay they don't have no room for me i am not a candidate for uh any short pixie nothing without a relaxer okay it looked like little bb guns little book shots and there's nothing wrong with it but if i'm going for a short pixie i don't care how much mold and lotion i use my texture isn't like that but the way that her hair texture is i was able to do it with the foam wrap right but i am showing you that there is not a lot of hair in my comb there's not any hair in my comb because i know that as we're watching somebody's granddaughter is going to be like oh my god you're combing our hair hard no i'm not there's a difference between combing and detangling i tell you guys not to detangle hair wet detangling and combing are very different but again look at the comb there is no hair in my comb i don't know why but when you are filming something it just looks a lot rougher than it really is but it's not and at this point i am just pretty much getting rid of the hair that i know we're not using um i'm definitely not going to be able to get like a defined cut here but i really really enjoy doing shortcuts because it is scissor over comb was one of my favorite ways to cut hair but I do want you guys to pay attention to this. This is how the hydrogen bond looks. And when the hydrogen bond attacks the hair, not attacks, but when water hits the hair, the hair swells and it reverts back. So that's what I want you to be aware of. I would tell people all the time, if you don't have a soft texture, a short pixie cut is not for you without a relaxer. Because when you're in the shop, I can get it looking good. Like I can girl you're gonna be there but when you leave when you leave and you go home and you try to do your hair yourself you're most likely not going to be able to mold it down the way that i'm able to mold it down and this is why i really like let people know if you want to do a short pixie cut depending on your texture a relaxer is not optional so remember, certain styles are just not for everybody. That's again why I'm going back down memory lane because this video is about six years old, but I'm going back down memory lane just to show you guys, right? Even though again, no, she does not have a relaxer, but I am cutting her hair in a way that will make it easier for her to mold. But is it going to be that easy for her to do what I'm doing right now at home i don't know let's see so as you can see she had um, a little bit of breakage around her um, edges too it was a very it was six years ago again and i remember i didn't i didn't do her hair repeatedly you know what i mean this was like towards the end of my career so i really i'm not going to sit here and try to lie and make something up about what was going on but right now what i am doing is working with the hydrogen bond in the last video with the relaxer we were working with the disulfide bond right now i am working with the hydrogen bond in her hair which is the bond in the hair that is temporarily set by water so with this foam i am using this foam which is a polymer right but a non-comedogenic polymer comedogenic means that it's not going to block her pores or her follicles right but it is going to help me mold her hair down i'm using a lot yes I know, but if you know, you know. I just don't know. 
I don't know what to say. I learned how to mold down hair uh, from an old school hairstylist. All right. I'm, well, she was old school, but she ain't old. Tiffany, uh, she was at my wedding. Right. And I learned how to do shortcuts from Tiffany. And I remember I used to use just a little bit of mold and lotion. And she was like, girl, what are you doing? And she showed it to me. And ever since then, girl, my mold's been everything. But yeah, so um, I'm just making sure that I smooth all of her hair down. And that's another thing. Even with like silk presses, I get a lot of people, um, they say like, oh, I tried to do the scientific brushing. But then when I brush my hair, my curls or my hair got puffy. Or I try to do the scientific brushing after a silk press. But then every time I brush my hair, my hair is puffy. My love, if you straighten your hair and then you brush it and it makes it puffy again, you never set your bonds properly because that shouldn't happen i can guarantee you if you come sit in my chair and i give you a silk press and you can comb and brush your hair until you, until your fingers fall off and your hair is not going to revert back unless you got water on your brush so that's something that i really really want everybody to be like cautious of and i want everybody to think about right as I'm smoothing her hair, I'm not just combing in her hair because it's fun. I am smoothing her hair down and I'm literally having a nonverbal conversation with her hair, telling her bonds, I want you to go smooth and I want you to lay this way. And then I'm adding these strips because these neck strips, what they end up doing, they end up holding everything in place without sticking to her hair. So as these, as her hair dries, these strips are going to like naturally detach themselves from her hair if that makes sense right so now at this point i have a pretty good mold all right uh don't make me lie it could take anywhere between 20 anywhere between 30 minutes to uh maybe like 45 minutes depending on the texture of my client's hair so now the real haircut begins because the first one was just kind of like it wasn't a dry cut because the hair was wet but excuse me it was kind of just like to get our initial shape but now i'm going to i'm like stepping back and i'm looking at her face right and i'm just checking to see like how i could customize her haircut to fit her head right and then even though um she was of course 100 percent on board with the cut she was like girl get it done i still wanted to make sure she was comfortable and i wanted to make sure it was something that she would be able to do at home herself and i also wanted this haircut to not look like a big chop right i think so many times the things that make everybody so insecure is whenever you do a big chop you just cut all your hair off and you just gotta walk around and learn how to feel pretty without having hair when there are different options there are different things that you can do right but of course i cannot stress it enough don't you be going around taking this video to your you no know, hairstyles talking about oh see this thing you can get a short pixie with no relaxer i ain't saying nothing like that your hair gotta be a certain texture and if that man or that woman say that texture ain't you baby you need to find out something else but now again at this point i'm going through and cutting her hair i vividly remember this day i did not have my trimmers at, uh, at work so i had to do everything freehand which was cool you know i have my clippers i have my liners nothing so i had to do every year overcall which is cool because that was actually the way that i learned how to fade right and how i learned how to uh do elevation as it pertains to shortcuts right so that is what we are doing here so i just want to let everybody know like yes long hair is the goal for the majority of people on the planet but if long hair is not the thing that you want to do and you just want to have a healthy scalp healthy hair follicles and the option to grow your hair out or cut it off or whatever you want to do short pixie cuts are always for the win and i want to mention that the majority of women that have short pixie cuts are going to get their hair relaxed every couple of weeks and they're not relaxing old hair and they're relaxing new hair because if you wear a short pixie cut like think about it look at the length of her hair in the back right 
if I was to cut that like like almost like taper it in the back, then in in two weeks, that's brand new hair. Everything that I'm cutting is brand new hair. And if she wants the style that I'm doing right now to stay looking the same, she's gonna have me cut that off. And that'll be brand new hair that's no longer relaxed. And then there we go. So that's something that I really, really, really want everybody to think about. Whenever women are wearing short pixie cuts, they're not relaxing their hair every other day. And I need you to understand from a scientific perspective, if relaxers were so damaging, then why is it that women who wear their hair in short pixie cuts have to go to the shop every week and every week they're getting over an inch and some change cut? off the back make it make sense right if relaxers were damaging the hair that they relax wouldn't constantly grow back like i used to wear my hair in a sh it's short in this video i used to wear my hair in a pixie because that's all i had time for it right and my hair grew back with no problem it was actually annoying how fast it grew back so these are things that I wanted. I want you guys to think about. A lot of my clients that went pixie, they were going pixie so they could just focus on their scalp health. They were not worried about length. They were not worried about length retention in any way, shape, or form. It was all about scalp health. And I understand on social media, it makes it, it look like when a relaxer is applied to your head, your whole head fall off. But if the relaxer is applied properly and if the scalp is prepped properly, you don't get any burn and any inflammation on the scalp whatsoever if you know what you're doing, right? So anytime you see or saw pixies on my channel before, they were of women who were going down the road of, okay, I want to focus on my scalp health. And focusing on scalp health doesn't always mean natural hair. It doesn't always mean no relaxer. It doesn't. Because the majority of women who who say, okay, I want to focus on scalp health and I'm going to get a relaxer is the same woman who's getting her hair done every two weeks or every week. Every week or every two weeks, she's in the salon getting her hair done. She's not putting any products in her hair outside of the products that her, her stylist puts in or the, or the products that she puts in herself that first day when she washes her hair maybe a serum every blue moon maybe a little bit of dry shampoo to get rid of extra oil but that's pretty much it guys so these are things that i really want everybody to think about am i trying to get everybody to go over to relaxers no you can do whatever you want to do but i just want to make sure that when you're doing what you want to do you make sure that you're making decisions and having choices and and only staying true to the options that really run best for you or the ones that really really make the most sense and relaxers and chemical services are not the problem and for every woman who's watching this right now who's like no that's not true relaxers are bad and black women don't love themselves i have a question for you and it's not a rhetorical question i really want somebody to answer this for me in the comments if if women from other races get perms just as much as black women get relaxers why is it only within the black community that shames each other for changing the chemical structure of their hair because other races of women don't attack each other for adding x for adding extra disulfide bonds to their hair because their hair isn't curly they don't have that many disulfide bonds so they have to add more but you never hear anybody attacking anybody for adding more and I saw five on. But yet, when a black woman or a woman with curly hair gets a perm and she takes away some of those I saw five bonds, she is ashamed of herself. She doesn't like being who she is, but she's just changing the chemical compound of her hair shaft the same way everybody else does. Why is that different, right? It's not a rhetorical question. I'm not being a smart ass. I seriously want to know. Somebody answer me in the comment because it's something that never made sense, right? And I want more people to do research on perms, relaxers, keratin treatments, uh, Japanese straighteners, like everything has its place. A lot of stylists are promoting keratin treatments right now. And the only time somebody should get a keratin treatment is if they have high porosity hair 
or if they have color in their hair and their hair is damaged from the color. It's a way to protect your hair from damage because it puts a coating, a layer on top of the hair shaft. And any Tababi who gets a keratin treatment should only get one after a consultation where your cosmetologist gives you a porosity test to see if whether or not you're a candidate for a keratin treatment. But a keratin treatment and relaxer are nothing alike, but they're, they all have their place. They all have their place. And the key is learning which one works best for you, learning which one is going to give you the result that you want, and learning which style is going to give you the flexibility that you need to keep up and maintain healthy hair patterns okay i really hope that this makes sense so if you need more information make sure you check the playlist in the description box below because i've broken down breaking down i've broken down all of my videos all of my informational videos into playlists so that way you can go through and pack and see unpack and see what you need here on my channel and if you need a little bit more help, make sure you log on to my website and sign up for my seven day challenge. In my next video, I'm going to have a lot more information on it, a lot more reviews and so much more information coming to you guys. But really wanted you to see this. And really quick before we go, I had this one little vlog I was going to add at the end. I got kind of emotional and started crying in the video at the end. I think I'm just going to leave it to my private members. But if y'all want to see it, leave it in the comments. Say you want to see. So if y'all don't see it, it's because people ain't say they wanted to see it. But let me know what you think about this video. Give it a thumbs up. Comment below. I love you guys so much. And until the next video, bye.